Okay, so I'm extremely excited. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys the ultimate guide to the Natty Plus protocol. This is the protocol that I have been using to reacquire my peak physique. I believe that this is revolutionary stuff. The protocol that got you bigger than me, who's done a lot of steroids, and yet you can still call yourself Natty. We call it Natty Plus, right? We'll get into that. We'll get into why this whole, uh, this ideology of this Natty or not dichotomy isn't necessarily the best way to conceptualize it. But this is revolutionary stuff. You guys are watching something that's on the cutting edge right now. I truly believe that if people really fully comprehended this, this philosophy, then everyone would be doing this. There'd be no reason not to. No reason not to. So that, that's one of the rules of the Natty Plus, actually, right. that there's no reason not to do it. Yeah, and we'll get into the rules. But first, I want to get people excited and just tell them about some of, of my results. So I'm joined with Tony Huge. He helped me formulate it. He helped me formulate this Natty Plus protocol. I think the combination of my philosophy, which led me to select very specific supplements that should be incorporated into this protocol and his knowledge of these supplements created this really synergistic effect that made this happen. So he's been able to witness these incredible results that I've had. One of them has been the doubling of my natural testosterone levels. My testosterone levels were very low, 340 nanograms per deciliter, which is extremely low for someone who is healthy and into bodybuilding, right? That's right on the edge of being able to get a prescription for testosterone for testosterone deficiency. Yeah. Right. And so in only 11 days, they actually boosted my testosterone levels boosted up to around 700, which is pretty incredible. And we'll get into that a little later. Also a 15 X in growth hormone. Now there is a caveat why maybe the average growth level growth hormone level increase wasn't 15 X, but objectively from one blood text te from one blood test to the next, the number increased by 15x, 1500% increase, which is absolutely wild. And in the first couple months, I gained around 20 pounds, mostly lean mass, maybe some of it was water, but I didn't gain too much of a body fat percentage along with it. And yeah, three years ago, I was actually 157 pounds. I just completed a 40 day fast. And how tall are you? Six foot three. <laughs> So I've gained 65 pounds in about three years. And that transformation was certainly impacted substantially by the 90 plus protocol. So now I have essentially reacquired my peak physique. In fact, I'm certainly holding on to more muscle than I ever have before. Maybe I'm not as lean as I ever have been before, but at my prime physique, which most people would say is my prime physique, I was weighing 205 pounds. Now I'm weighing 220. So, yeah, I'm super excited about this. So what is the Natty Plus protocol? So it's a specific supplementation regimen and there are rules, right? So these supplements have to be relatively healthy. So one of the downsides of taking, say, anabolic steroids is that they can have extremely adverse health consequences. And we see this in the bodybuilding world all the time. People abuse steroids and they die early. They have severe health complications and yeah, you're sacrificing a lot in order to achieve your peak physique. And some people are willing to do that. I'm just not, right? Also, I don't want to suppress my natural hormonal production. Some people are totally cool with this, to be on testosterone for the rest of their life. But I'm not. I don't want to have to ensure accessibility to testosterone to with every country that I travel to. Is that the rule number two? That it doesn't suppress your, significantly suppress your natural hormonal okay. production, right? And it also doesn't create a dependence. So you can take these supplements and then you can cease taking these supplements and essentially you go back to baseline. The problem with taking external hormones like testosterone is when you stop taking those hormones, then your base natural levels are going to be plummeted and you're going to feel terrible because your body is lacking testosterone. So when you're taking external hormones like testosterone, it suppresses your natural hormonal production because basically these external hormones signal to your body that you have an abundance of these hormones within your system. And so your balls shrink and they stop actually, uh, they stop producing natural testosterone. So I don't want that to happen. And fertility is de decreased. So when natural testosterone production stops, so does fertility. Right. And so why exactly did I create this Natty Plus protocol? And well, how is well, it? Well, that was different? rule number two, right? But there's four four rules. I just forget what they are. Well, healthy, relatively healthy. Healthy, yep. right? Not suppressive, right? You don't create a dependence. And I believe, I believe that's it. Or essentially, 
they're they're so beneficial it would be silly not to take them that, yeah that was your rule those yeah. are the three rules i think there was four but that covers the main ones. okay yeah, yeah those are the main rules yeah. so why was this philosophy created well i noticed that there was this false dichotomy in the bodybuilding world where people segregated this naturalness condition into to two facets natural versus unnatural and i don't believe that this is a great conceptualization of this phenomenon right i believe that it's more of a spectrum mm. so i believe that this false dichotomy of natural versus not creates this attachment to identity so for example you have these natural athletes they're so attached to their natty card their natural identity that if you gave them a supplement that was completely healthy had no negative side effects whatsoever only only holistically improved their overall well-being they would still not take it right because they're attached to being natural right and then the other on the other side like got, there's no logical reason not to take it it's just their ego exactly yeah. it's nothing more than their ego right and so this is why I, i'm saying if you guys truly under, understand this natty plus philosophy there's no reason really not to do it right and so and then there's the other side there is the unnaturals and because they're you know they've already given up their natty card then it's like okay why not abuse anabolic substances they already shut down their natural hormonal production they don't have the natty card so might as well you know why take would you to take a step backwards yeah. and stop taking steroids and go back to healthier possibly less powerful than steroid compounds right so i believe that the bodybuilding world is in dire need of a balanced approach to supplementation you know too many guys take steroids have side effects and then they stop taking steroids and like oh i'm never going to take steroids again because i had side effects and now they've completely given up mm -hmm. on chemical enhancement too that's third category like, right yeah. yeah but there are chemical enhancement approaches that where you can get a lot of the benefits of steroids without the health consequences of steroids right and i because i started to think what does natural even mean and the, the problem is that everyone thinks that there's these objective, tangible categories of naturalness or not natural, right? But in reality, it's all relative and there's no distinct line, right? So for example, a lot of people will say that natural testosterone boosters that boost your natural testosterone production are of course natural. But then analogously, you have MK677 that increases your natural growth hormone production, but they consider that not natural right i don't really get the logic behind that and also some people would say oh well it's very simple if you're taking external hormones then you're not natural right but people don't consider vitamin d is an external hormone that actually boosts testosterone melatonin is an external hormone that can significantly benefit your physique if it improves your sleep quality and recovery right and then you know it's all about how you define natural too because for example, injecting testosterone may actually get your testosterone levels back to similar levels to primal humans, right? Because we live in an unnatural environment where testosterone is actually decreasing due to this unnatural environment that we live in. So if you base naturalness off of your, your similarity of your hormonal composition to primal humans, then actually injecting testosterone would be considered natural. And this is not me trying to justify that I'm natty. This is the thing, I don't, I'm not attached to these labels. This is what, it's hard for people to understand this, right? I'm not attached to a natural label. If I have to label myself something, it's natty plus. That's why we created the name. In 2023, given the, all of the chemical and social cultural influences on us suppressing our natural testosterone, it's pretty unnatural to allow ourselves to have lower testosterone. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, exactly. And then some people say, oh, it's simple. You're not natural if you're taking a substance that's banned by the World Anti-Doping Association, right? But the World Anti-Doping Association bans cannabis, which is obviously ex extremely natural. It's, it's just a plant, right? And also, before 2004, caffeine was prohibited, right? So before 2004, you would be considered unnatural if you took caffeine. So when you really start to think critically and look into this deeply, you'll understand that naturalness is more of a spectrum, right? So I conceptualize it from one to 10, right? If you're a one, essentially you, you don't take anything whatsoever. And then if you're a 10, you're taking something like, like Trenbolone or something that is very unnatural and really, really benefits your physique from some sort of anabolic mechanism, right? So 
I think that this conceptualization of naturalness versus not as a spectrum allows people to be more balanced. And instead of just being natural or not, they can say, oh, I'm a three on the natty or not spectrum, or I'm a four or I'm a five. And the natty plus is essentially substances five and below, right? And these substances also have to be healthy and follow the rules that we were talking about. And this is very personal to me because I was an unhealthy natty. This is the thing. A lot of people have this misconception that you can be completely natural. And if you're completely natural, you're definitely healthy. Mm. That naturalness is the healthiest way. But because I was natural, I had to engage in obsessive compulsive behaviors just to acquire the physique of my dreams. I had to obsessively count calories, right? Count every single calorie, every single macro. I would carry a scale to restaurants. It was, it was totally obsessive compulsive. I'd worry about my training. I couldn't skip a day. I would feel very, I would experience a lot of negative emotion if I skipped a day of training. I had to sacrifice my social life, right? I couldn't go out and party. I had to get perfect sleep, right? I couldn't drink at all. I still don't really drink that much at all, but on the 90 plus protocol, that's actually okay if you do that once in a while, right? So the idea is I can incorporate these substances and I can still maintain this physique year round without utilizing or without engaging in these really unhealthy, obsessive compulsive bodybuilding lifestyle behaviors that are very normalized, but they're still very unhealthy. You see a lot of these naturals on YouTube. And what's funny, this is the really funny thing, right? A lot of people are worried about suppressing their natural testosterone levels by taking external hormones like testosterone. Well, being a natural and cutting down to sub 10% body fat is gonna crash your testosterone. It's gonna suppress your testosterone a ton, right? There's enough anecdotal reports of athletes crashing their natural hormones by training too hard that if they just replace their natural hormones to a natural level, they'd be much healthier, but their intense exercise is causing their natural hormones to crash and them to suffer all the symptoms of testosterone deficiency. So yeah, and I'm not going to name any names, but you see all these different natural YouTubers who are suffering physically and mentally because yeah. they're not incorporating substances and they can't achieve their dream physique without engaging in these unhealthy behaviors, mm -hmm. like really restricting calories for long periods of time and crashing their natural hormones by, by doing so. Yeah. So, I so mean, we yeah. have fake natties, people who are using steroids and harsher compounds and lying about it to make people think that the, those physiques can be achieved without chemistry. And then we have these natties whose entire life revolves around their physique. Also, it's a bit of misinformation because they're trying to convince people that by doing a certain training program or a certain diet, they can have that physique. But people don't realize their entire life revolves around having that physique. And it's not practical for people that have anything else on going on in their life, like children or a job or school. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or wanting to have fun. <laughs> yes, exactly. So... I think that we should make decisions about our supplementation utilization based on critical thinking and its effect on our overall holistic well-being rather than the attachment to some sort of label like natural or not, right? But this is really revolutionary thinking. This almost doesn't exist in the fitness industry. It doesn't, no. Yeah. That's why I'm so passionate about this because this is a much needed step, step uh, in the conceptualization of natty versus not and supplementation util utilization. This is kind of the next step. It's a more nuanced way of thinking. It's tough for people because it is a more challenging way to think, right? And it's tough because everybody else is either categorizing natural or not. And to get people to change the way they think is like questioning their entire reality. It's almost like you need to take psychedelics to open up your mind and build your neuroplasticity to even start accepting the fact that there's a healthier, more effective way to have all of the benefits of taking chemistry without the side effects. Yeah. And, and this actually relates to a more a more systemic issue that's applicable to all different areas of life. And this is just black and white thinking. People j like to think in black and white because it's very easy. It doesn't take a lot of bandwidth in the brain. It's essentially intellectually lazy though. And so bl black and white thinking is actually considered by psychologists as a cognitive distortion, right? And it is actually much more close to reality to conceptualize it as a spectrum, these varying things in life as a spectrum, right? And this is just one of them. So the cool thing is, if you can actually really internalize this philosophy, truly comprehend it, 
it, this philosophy can actually carry over to many different aspects of your life and it can make you just an overall better person and help you understand reality a lot more. So it's really cool. There are a lot of applications to this that is uh, amazing, right? And so the other reason that I really like it is because it can help you get your dream physique a lot faster without being unhealthy and without suppressing your natural testosterone levels. Because a lot of people, they'll go through life and as kids or teenagers, they'll think that getting a, your dream physique is everything, that it's gonna make you happy in life. And then all of a sudden, when they get older and they achieve their dream physique, they're gonna be like, oh wait, I'm, I'm still not happy. Like this wasn't as fulfilling as I thought. But then by that time, they already suppressed their natural hormonal production. They already destroyed their health. Well, this can kind of get you your dream physique pretty quickly and but in a, in a healthy way and so you can realize mm -hmm. that hey you know maybe the physique isn't isn't everything you know well the physique is a lot i mean the reason why you started developing your physique was to get girls and certainly having the physique you have has gotten you more girls <laughs> and respect and feeling better about yourself i mean there's so many benefits to having a good physique we should definitely all strive to have the best physique we can the problem is if you also want to have uh, you know, a successful business or a good job and, and a family and all of the other things, then you have to choose between it. You have to choose, do I have a good physique or am I going to be successful at my job? Uh, or, but, but there are ways where you can take shortcuts at both. Mm -hmm. Like you can listen to people about how to make more money or improve your brain performance. And the same way you can take shortcuts by using healthy chemistry and the approach that you've taken. Yeah, absolutely. A admirable physique has certainly opened the door to a lot more women. It'll get your foot in the door. It doesn't help you get all the way, I would say. There's a lot more to it. But I just noticed that the physique wasn't necessarily everything, but it can certainly help. And I, I definitely encourage people to get a good physique. Absolutely. I relate it to the career. Like you think, okay, if I just made a lot of money, I'll be happy. But right. then if you have a crappy physique and you have a lot of money, you're still suffering. So you want to have, you want to work on every part of your life. Um, the problem is these guys spending all of their lives working right. on the physique and the, the sacrifice of other things. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important to improve these various facets of your life without sacrificing the other facets of your life. And so this is what the Natty Plus protocol does. So yeah, I think it's time to get into the actual supplements that I'm taking. I, what, just one more thing, because yeah. there are some bodybuilders and fitness guys who just love the grind and love the slow progress, and they mm. want to take 10 years to build their physique. Mm. There are some of those people out there. Mm. It's just that so, a lot of those are the influencers that other people follow, and that's not really their thing, but that's who they're following their advice, mm. and then they they unfortunately don't get the same results because they don't have the same level of dedication as these influencers do. Most of us need shortcuts and there's nothing wrong with taking shortcuts. You're going to get a lot farther in life by taking intelligent, calculated shortcuts. Yeah, exactly. So most, most people are following these influencers who are ex extremely meticulously following this very structured bodybuilding lifestyle. They're devoting their whole life to it. But in reality, most people can't do that. Most people have normal jobs. They're very busy. They, they have to work, they have families, right? And so if they want to have the same results as these fitness influencers, they can't be following the exact same protocol, right? Uh, they would have to take shortcuts. And it's totally okay to take shortcuts. I think people have this ego about, oh, I wanna work hard, right? Uh, taking shortcuts is bad, but- Oh, if take hard work plus the shortcut and then you see some real spectacular progress yeah yeah like you like you you aren't training that hard and you're not dieting like a bodybuilder but if you did the natty plus and you trained and acted as meticulously you would look like a professional bodybuilder Probably. on the natty plus stack you right. wouldn't even need steroids yeah exactly but i'm content with my physique i mean i'm still looking to improve it a little bit but that sort of lifestyle just isn't worth it for me I appreciate my more balanced lifestyle much more now. I work out in a shitty apartment gym. I don't even have a gym membership, right? I just work out downstairs. It's an apartment gym. I don't count calories anymore, right? I mean, you guys can see I just eat the food that the girls cook me. Oh, please do a day of eating, though, yeah, also. A I day should. of eating vlog video. Yeah. 
Right, exactly. So I live an extremely balanced lifestyle and my, my fitness regimen just is very stress-free. I mean, if I'm not on my phone distracted in the gym, I can get a full workout in, in 30 minutes, 30 minutes a day. So that's the power of the Natty Plus protocol. You can live such an amazing lifestyle and you don't have to sacrifice all these other aspects of life and still have the physique that you want to have. So let's talk about these supplements. So I think Natty Plus supplements are essentially the supplements three to a five on the Natty or Not spectrum, but I still take natural supplements as well. I still take natural supplements from a one to, from all the way from a one to five on the Natty or Not spectrum. So I think maybe we'll go over the, the Natty stack first. So these are the natural supplements that I take or I have taken before because I do cycle between these supplements. So I'm not on all of them all the time and I'll get into the details behind that. But I think we should go over some natural supplements first and then work our way up to the Natty Plus supplements. So also I wanna be clear that I've been extremely honest about everything I've taken in the past and I'm continuing to being honest now. So if you guys are curious about what I'm taking, continue to watch this video and I will tell you the most unnatural supplements that I've ever taken. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay. And remember, we've gotten his lab work done throughout this entire experiment of the Natty Plus protocol. If he was taking steroids, you would have seen it. Now, there's a lot of people out there claiming that you cannot possibly achieve the physique that you've achieved without steroids and that you must be on steroids and calling you a fake Natty. But we have all of the blood work to prove that he has suffered no suppression of his natural testosterone levels. His natural testosterone levels are higher. His follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which would be suppressed under any steroid cycle, are not suppressed. Right. And so that's what this channel is going to be about. After this video, I'm going to go into detail on the blood work and the various experiments that I've run, especially with, with the Natty Plus supplements, the most intense supplements. So, so first, yeah, let's go over some of the Natty supplements that I'm taking. So creatine, creatine, very well known. It's a very well respected natural supplement. So much research behind it. It's very well accepted in the bodybuilding community. Many people take it. Uh, there's really no reason not to take it. So essentially it increases the ATP production during intense exercise, allows you to perform better during your workouts. And basically you take five grams a day of this. And this is one of the supplements, one of the more rare supplements where you don't build a tolerance to. So you can essentially take five grams for life and be totally fine. So I am taking five grams of creatine daily. And yeah, I don't think there's any reason not to. And then Blue Ox Testosterone Booster. So, oh, creatine, let's rate it. We're going to rate all of these on the spectrum, uh, the Natty or Not spectrum from 1 to 10. Well, creatine is naturally found in, in meat right. and beef, and you could get a significant amount of creatine by eating a huge amount of beef. Right. So you're just getting a concentrated amount of what's already in nature. So creatine is very natural. I give it a 1.25. The only reason that it's not a 1 is because you are acquiring this at concentrations that aren't available to primal humans. Yes, you could eat five pounds of meat or something like that, but you get the convenience, the unnatural convenience of getting all that creatine in one scoop. So next, Blue Ox Testosterone Booster. This is by Enhanced Labs. Oh, and by the way, I think first we should tell everyone where we get these supplements. So I get all my supplements from either Enhanced Labs, Swiss Chems, or Next Chems. These are very legitimate companies. I have taken these supplements from each one of these companies. I know they're not underdosed. I can feel them working. They definitely work. And so you can use my code PLUS, P-L-U-S, PLUS for a discount if you want to get any of these supplements. And all of your lab work that's been done throughout this is on these supplements. Yeah. Right, exactly. So next, Blue Ox Testosterone Booster. So this is one of the two testosterone boosters that I've taken that have helped double my testosterone levels. So I... I always like to cycle these, right? So Blue Ox, I can be on for a pretty long period of time, but I always like to take little breaks to resensitize myself. So I do something like six weeks on, one week off, something like that. Some people take it with no breaks, take right. it all the time, but yeah, you know, who knows what's better to take a break or not take a break, but. Right, yeah. Oh, and we're gonna talk about the priority because a lot of people, they kind of have a paralysis by analysis here. They're not sure. I give them so many supplements and they're not sure which ones to take. So we're going to 
we're gonna rank these by priority as well. Creatine priority is very high because really, so how I think about it is all of these supplements you should be taking if you have the money to do so. I guess the only other inconvenience would be swallowing a bunch of pills. That doesn't really bother me. I don't mind swallowing a bunch of pills, but some of these are, I guess you get more bang for your buck than others. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna be listing these by priority. If you have a lot of money, you should be taking all of them. If you don't have a lot of money, maybe you only take the high priority ones, right? So it's not like you have to buy the entire Natty Plus stack to get these results. Choose the ones that, that fit your budget and fit your goals, right? So, and, and yeah, your goals. So for example, Blue Ox Testosterone Booster is gonna work way better for those with low testosterone mm -hmm. rather than those who already have high testosterone. I think the reason why Blue Ox and Black Ox, which we'll talk about uh, later, doubled my testosterone is because I had extremely low testosterone levels, 340 mm -hmm. nanograms per deciliter. If you have higher testosterone, you probably won't get the same results. And maybe you wanna utilize right. the other supplements if you already have really high testosterone. So Blue Ox, I, I, I think that this is just the, the foundation of the natural herbs that help boost your natural testosterone, right? The Black Ox we'll talk about in a minute, but Blue Ox is just amazing foundation. It has a lot of different herbs that, af that affect your testosterone through different pathways. So for example, boron, it has boron, which decreases sex hormone binding glob globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin is, is something that will attach to your free testosterone and actually limit your free testosterone from being bioavailable in the body. And so boron will help mitigate that problem. And so these herbs help increase your testosterone through all these different pathways. Yeah, the Blue Ox Testosterone Booster is a combination of the top three mainstream testosterone boosters packed into one. It's all natural ingredients, and it so naturally supports your testosterone levels by giving your body all of the nutrients that it needs to make testosterone, because it's likely that our diets in the modern day and age are deficient in the nutrients that our body needs to make testosterone. So you could calculate your diet flawlessly and weigh your food and make sure your food's all organic and and get most of the nutrients that are in blue ox testosterone booster but very few people are able capable willing to be so meticulous with their diet it's so much easier just to take a supplement to make sure we have all of the building materials necessary to make our own natural testosterone right yes absolutely and now you're not spectrum rating i'm going to give blue ox just a 1.5 because yeah, you are getting a lot of these herbs at concentrations that aren't available to primal humans. So, okay. Next we have arachidonic acid. So arachidonic acid is a fairly natural supplement. I'm gonna give this one just a 1.25 because all it is is an omega-6 fatty acid, right? It's just, again, you're being able to get this at concentrations that you wouldn't really be able to get naturally through your food. They're right? similar to creatine. You could eat enough meat to get enough of this. Most people don't. Um, and then it's like creatine also that it builds up and it's more effective when it's built up. Right. So arachidonic acid increases inflammation in the muscle, and this inflammation sends a muscle building signal and help, helps increase protein synthesis. So the cool thing about arachidonic acid is you're gonna feel it. Uh, the standard dosage is 1400 milligrams per day. And if you take 1400 milligrams per day, after a while, you're gonna start feeling extremely sore after your workouts. So I actually don't recommend this to beginners because beginners, actually one of the, one of the reasons that hinders people from going to the gym is that they go to the gym, they feel extremely sore, they hate it. Some people love it, but some people hate it and then they don't go back and they mm -hmm. can't adhere to that workout regimen, right? So if you're a beginner and you're already feeling sore, maybe you don't take arachidonic acid, but if you're an advanced lifter and you're missing that feeling of soreness, arachidonic acid is great because it brings that back and gives you that feeling of accomplishment. And so I really like it. Uh, again, I would do some sort of cycle like six weeks on, one week off just to maintain sensitivity. I'm actually not on it right now. I'm a rare case where I s struggle with this inflammatory staph infection kind of on my lower body. And I'm working on different ways to mitigate that. But because that kind of is an inflammatory condition, I speculate that arachidonic acid may increase that inflammation and actually hurt, cause that to be even more of a problem. Oh, you have to experiment yeah. while you're having that inflammation and see if it makes it worse. I noticed that if we take arachidonic acid up to a certain point, most of the inflammation stays in the muscle, but if mm. you exceed it, then you'll start feeling right. inflammation other places. And the main way that I'll feel it 
is in my neck and my back and my elbows and my knees and wake up in the morning and feel like you get hit by a train. You want to wake up in the morning and feel sore in the muscles, especially the day after the workout, then you know mm. it's not the only way to gauge the success of a workout, but right. it's it's one way. And if you feel that soreness in the muscles, that's good. If you feel it in joints, tendons, ligaments, and your spine, then you know there's too much inflammation and it's time to back off. By the way, if I get too much inflammation from arachidonic acid, I take an ibuprofen before bed, and then I take a break from arachidonic acid before uh, restarting it again. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So standard dose is 1,400 milligrams. Maybe I should experiment with the dosage. Maybe I should take a little less and, and watch and see how it affects how it affects my condition. But yeah, I give I give arachidonic acid again, a 1.25 because it's extremely natural. It's an omega-6 fatty acid and it's just available at concentrations that weren't available to primal humans. So next, alpha yohimbine. So I take between three and six milligrams daily, not necessarily every day. So far day. we've been talking mostly about muscle building things. So right. now you got a fat, fat loss. Right, thing. this is a fat loss because the 90 plus protocol isn't just about building muscle. I would say it's primarily about building muscle, but also staying lean and also burning fat as well because there are two components to a good physique. It's, it's very simple. It's essentially building muscle and burning fat. So yes, we have supplements that, that do both. So yeah, three to six milligrams daily. Again, a cycle. I, you can do various different cycles. So, for example, you could do a couple days on per week and a day off or something like that. Or you could do six weeks on, one week off. But I think it is important to cycle to regain sensitivity. But I like to take it on days where either I want to eat a little less. I like to calorie cycle. So on days I want to eat less, it does suppress appetite, which is really yeah. great. I, I want to go, don't forget what you're going to say, but mm -hmm. I want to go back to the sensitivity thing. I noticed that the benefits of Yohimbine do not decrease over time, but the side effects do decrease. Mm. So there may be some benefit in forcing yourself to take it every day because the side effects of uh, just feeling a little bit lightheaded <clears throat> or I don't know, do you get it? Sweats? You get sweaty, oh, right? But sweaty or light. That shows me that it's working. I want to sweat, <laughs> but you can keep taking it and get less of the sweating and um, lightheadedness, and it'll still be working. Really? Yeah, it'll be still be working in the fat cells. Okay, yeah. interesting. And so alpha yohimbine is actually so. There's yohimbine, and then there's alpha yohimbine. So yo alpha yohimbine is actually different from yohimbine in that it has a higher affinity for the alpha two receptor, and so it is believed that alpha yohimbine has less of the side effects as, as Yohimbine. So I don't really, they're both great, but I don't really see any reason to take Yohimbine rather than Alpha Yohimbine. So this is why I stick to Alpha Yohimbine, right? So yeah, it, it has a lot of amazing benefits, fat burning, appetite suppressant, and yeah, so it's it's great. Now you're not spectrum, I'm gonna give it uh, 1.5. Libido benefits too. Libido, we'll talk about that too because okay. I, we have a sexual performance Natty Plus and Natty okay. Stack as well. So yeah. yeah, we'll get into that. Okay, next, uh, Phytoturk from Enhanced Labs. This is Turkesterone. So this is a supplement that is has been quite prevalent recently. It's been talked about a lot in the fitness community. A lot of the Turkesterone online being promoted by these various supplement companies is fake though. There have been a lot of supplement companies who have had their turkesterone analyzed and they realize that it's actually not turkesterone, it's ectisterone or, or something like that. So it's important yeah, that you- The bulk of the turkesterone sold over a couple year period of time was fake, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, priority. We need to talk about priority. Uh, 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 arachidonic acid, I say priority for advanced lifters, it's high. For beginner lifters, it's low. A blue ox testosterone booster, priority is high if you have low testosterone. Priority is low if you have high testosterone. And alpha yohimbine, priority is high if you're cutting. If you're bulking, it's, it's low. And then phytoturk, I'm gonna give this priority medium. It's just, it's, it's powerful. It's just not as powerful as some of the supplements we're gonna be talking about, right? So I think there are probably various pathways how this supplement increases muscular m muscularity. I think one of these is by activating the mTOR pathway, which stimulates protein synthesis, right? And then also it... So turkesterone works through the estrogen receptor instead of the androgen receptor. So mm -hmm. normally we think of bodybuilding hormones as always activating the androgen receptor. So, but estrogen actually builds muscle and then turkesterone works different than natural estrogen but still builds muscle and through the androgen receptor mm -hmm. so what's interesting about this is you could 
take something that saturates your androgen receptors and taking more isn't necessarily going to bring you that much more benefit versus mm -hmm. the side effects. And then you could instead shift your attention to this other pathway that's being ignored, which is the estrogen pathway. So that's where turkestrone is really amazing is because we're using just a completely different pathway to build muscle so it can work synergistically with other things. Okay. Yeah. Great. I give this on the natty or next, not natty or not spectrum. I'm going to give this a two. I guess it's funny because technically it's a steroid. It's a plant steroid, right? People just, there's, there's different ways to conceptualize steroids. I Egg. wonder how much plants you'd have to eat to get a large amount of turkestrone. That's what I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know the lot. answer, but that would be some good data. You should, can you do a short on that where you really analyze like how much of the herb yeah, you'd actually funny. have to eat? Yeah. Like you could actually get it and show like, I'd have to eat all of this or I could take these two pills. Yeah, exactly. So it is a plant steroid. It's funny because steroids mean a lot of different things. I mean, technically eggs are steroids. They contain cholesterol, which is a, a steroid, you know? But when, when most bodybuilders talk about steroids, they're talking about anabolic androgenic steroids. <clears throat> Turkesterone is just an anabolic steroid. So it's a plant steroid and it is anabolic or we wouldn't be taking it, but it's not an anabolic androgenic steroid. It doesn't affect the androgen receptor really in any way, right? And doesn't have androgenic side effects or androgenic effects. Right. right. But this does, I mean, a lot of people, uh, they have claimed online to show pretty dramatic transformations from, from turkestrone. Some people it really works. Some people it doesn't work very well. But I think the cool thing is because of the hype online where everyone is, is taking it and saying they're getting results, if anything, I think the placebo effect for me is, is, <laughs> is, is really strong, right? And that's, that's the thing. The cool thing about the placebo effect is it's real, right? I mean, even though you might be tricking your mind into getting results, you're still getting results. If you're going to take a placebo, you might as well take the least expensive placebo if it's all going to have the same effect if you believe it's going to work. Well, this is the cool thing because there's so much hype online about turkestrone. I think that's why the placebo, the placebo effect, effect can be really be strong. stronger. Yeah. So that's actually an, a real benefit of turkestrone. Yeah, it's now. a real benefit, but it actually does work it actually on does the work estrogen too. receptor yes. besides the placebo effect. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. Next is, is EpiMuscle. EpiMuscle by Enhanced Labs. This is Epic Catechin. So, do, oh, dosage for turkestrone, I take one to two grams daily. So that's, that's more than the, the dosage that it'll say on the back of the bottle because I really want it to work. But if you, if you take high doses of turkestrone, you're going to get an, an effect. So I take one to two grams daily. Epicatechin, one gram daily. And again, you can cycle it if you'd want to, something like six weeks on, one week off, or two days on, one day off. Or, but a, a lot of the, these, are, these are just so, these, these are more subtle. It's really not a big deal if you are on these perpetually, really. Right. These are all very healthy, natural products. Right. Just, they just happen to be, it's like you chose for the Natty Stack the most powerful natural products that actually yes. work to build muscle. And you excluded, because one of the rules of the Natty Plus protocol is the supplement actually has to work. Right. It has to have a significant benefit. Oh, so, yeah. So you've excluded all of these other herbal like you go to a supplement store and there's the shelves are packed with stuff that doesn't do anything you've excluded all of that i think that was one of the rules that we were forgetting that's just kind of a yeah. given yeah like yeah of course you the supplements are only implemented into the natty plus protocol if they actually provide significant results right. okay so epicatechin priority is just medium because again it maybe it's not as powerful as the other natty plus supplements but it, of course it still does work now you're not spectrum rating yeah and ahead. epicatechin works through reducing myostatin mm -hmm. uh, which the classic example is these bulls that have these huge muscles right. or people that are genetically gifted and can grow muscle very easily are thought to have low myostatin and there are more powerful things to lower myostatin like folostatin which is an injection which is something that has to be taken very frequently and then there's also uh yk11 uh which is on in the sarms class uh, which you don't want to take because you're worried that that will not suppress your natural testosterone production. That's why you've excluded it, I believe. Does YK11 have an effect on your natural testosterone production? Could it? I've done experiments on it, and I can't remember. It's been so long. I think the number one reason I'm taking it is because myostatin inhibitors can be very beneficial, but if you take too powerful of myostatin inhibitors, it can actually affect the joints, mm -hmm. and you actually risk injury because all of us and the tendons. So all of a sudden your muscles are stronger than your tendons and you have risk of injury because it weakens the tendons possibly, right? Yeah, I mean, anything that, that builds your strength too fast 
uh, where the tendons can't keep up because tendons take more time to develop than muscles do has that risk. But specifically myostatin lowering through epicatechin or YK11, if, if it reaches past a certain level, it actually does weaken the tendon in some way beyond just the muscle getting bigger and stronger. And I don't know exactly why that mechanism is there, but it's definitely there. Epicotican is a very mild myostatin inhibitor. Right. I've not heard of it happening with that, right. but it's like once you take, as you get more and more powerful, then yes, that becomes a serious risk. Yeah. And that's why I prefer epicatechin as opposed to YK11 or something like that. Okay. So now it's getting exciting. Now we're getting into the Natty Plus supplements. So these are supplements that are a five or below on the Natty or not spectrum. And these are going to be the, the most powerful. Okay. You're saying because the supplements so far could be considered Natty without even getting a Natty Plus. Now these ones, we've exceeded the Natty threshold. Right. But they're still fit within the natty plus definition of why wouldn't you take it because it doesn't have side effects right and again we talked about how it's probably more accurate to classify natty or not more on a spectrum but these are the supplements where the standard consensus of the bodybuilding world would say that these are not conventionally considered natural okay most people would not consider some of these natty plus supplements that we're about to talk about natural right but that doesn't mean that they're not healthy at sensible dosages and durations right and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be taking them the only reason that i would not take these if is if i were attached to the natural label right mm -hmm. now but again it's all about dosage and durations too because of course you could take too much of these and experience adverse effects so i'm very careful with the dosages and durations i would rather underdose and use a shorter duration and be careful rather than using a really long duration and a large quantity of the supplement. Because the shorter the duration, the less of a probability that you're actually going to suppress your natural hormonal production, right? And the same with the dosage. So, but some of these, actually, you have no chance to affect your natural testosterone production. Like the first one, MK677. So MK677 is a growth hormone secretagogue. So analogous to natural testosterone boosters that boost your natural testosterone production, MK677 is gonna boost your natural growth hormone production. I believe that it's significantly more powerful though, relative to testosterone boosters. Because testosterone boosters, I mean, testosterone boosters that I've taken are extremely powerful. They boosted my testosterone level by double. MK677 increased my growth hormone by 15X. Now, here's where I'll give the, the caveat. So from one blood test to the next, MK677 just objectively increased my, my growth hormone by, by 1500%. But MK677, it stimulates growth hormone and growth hormone is released in a pulsatile pattern. So there are pulses throughout the day. So basically growth hormone fluctuates throughout the day even more than testosterone. And testosterone, it'll be high in the morning and gradually decrease. MK677, there are, there are many different pulses throughout the day. So there are peaks and valleys. Right. And so one of the reasons why the second test was 15 X is because we probably caught it at a peak rather than in a valley. So the average growth hormone level might have been less than 15 X, but it was still significant. But what's wild is, see, we've we've looked. Well, at, yeah. I've done a bunch of different lab work experiments on MK677. And for some reason, I always seem to catch it during a peak. Yeah. I know. So, so this is the interesting thing. Most studies will say that MK677 basically doubles your growth hormone, but we've just experienced through, through the lab work, just wild results, wild results with MK677, just significant boosts in growth well, hormone beyond of, double. Critics of MK677 can't have it both ways. They'll say, ah, you know, it doesn't work. Or they'll say, oh, it has all these side effects of too much growth hormone. Well, does it work or not? Because if you're having side effects of too much growth hormone, then you have too much growth hormone, which is right. the side effect of MK677. You can take too much MK677 and you can have side effects of having too much growth hormone. That's not a side effect of MK677. That's a side effect of having too much growth hormone. Simply take less or take it less often and have lower growth hormone. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why everybody isn't incorporating mk677 in some way in their lives it just doesn't make any sense to me other than ignorance or ego right so again it's all about the dosage you can take somewhere from well 
five to 20 milligrams daily. So standard dosage is probably 20 milligrams daily. Me personally, when I get up to 20 milligrams, I experience just the slightest amount of brain fog because growth hormone does impact your neurotransmitter composition. Mm -hmm. So some people might experience brain fog, some people might not. So I found that the perfect happy medium is somewhere between 10 and 15 milligrams daily for me. And that's just me. Everyone will be affected differently. And you take breaks, frequent breaks also, right? Right. So this is, I was going to get into the, the cycle. So the cycle is interesting. Many people do something like eight weeks on and two weeks off or, or something like that, right? That's pretty standard. Eight to 16 weeks even. I do two days on and one day off. So not a lot of people are incorporating this type of cycle, but I think it's extremely beneficial for a couple different reasons. So MK677, one of the side effects you'll notice is that it really increases hunger which depending on your goals could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I like to calorie cycle, right? Caloric cycling keeps my metabolism high, keeps my leptin levels high. It makes it easier for me to stay lean. And it's more fun because I have high calorie days and low calorie days. And if you take MK677 two days on and one day off, that naturally facilitates two high calorie days and one low calorie day because your appetite is boosted for two days and it's low for one day. And I also notice that the side effects are even less. So like the water retention, is less brain fog is less so i'm able to take a little more with less side effects right and our natural growth hormone cycle is to have these pulses and when we're on mk677 our growth hormone is going to be higher all day i mean it's still going to be in pulses but it's going to be elevated all day and there seems to me a lot more natural way to take it is to take more frequent breaks. I don't understand why people take it every day for eight weeks like that when it is so much more natural to give the body breaks from it. So two days on, one day off makes perfect sense to me. Um, a lot of my clients end up doing five days on, two days off. Yeah, and the reason for that is that then they don't uh, get, uh, collect water retention. Mm -hmm. The water retention accumulates and then take a couple days off and the water retention's gone. And you know, some amount of water retention is good. Water retention in the muscle is good. It helps build muscle. It helps recovery. Uh, it's just the after you're on it for a longer period of time, the water retention uh, goes from just being in the muscle to being everywhere, you know, under the skin, around the heart and the abdomen, uh, because that's what growth hormone does. If you were taking growth hormone injections all day, every day, you'd have the same thing. You'd have water retention. It's not a side effect of MK677. It's a side effect of growth hormone. Right. Yeah. So priority for this is high. This is one that you should definitely be incorporating at some sort of dosage like there's no reason not to i think this one is a very high priority now you're not spectrum rating i'm going to give this one a 3.5 wait wait you, we're talked about growth hormone uh you know being increased by mk677 but what is the point of increasing growth hormone for you what is it doing for your physique oh well i just help makes it easier to build muscle and lose fat <laughs> like it's pretty simple That's, yeah, yeah growth hormone builds muscle and it uh helps with uh stem cells incorporating into the muscle for new muscle cells mm -hmm. of course it, it, there's other ways to do that harder and faster but it's going to help build new muscle cells so faster recovery faster injury recovery and fat loss and the conversion to igf sensitizing the muscles partitioning more nutrients into the muscles uh it's i mean increasing growth hormone as we get older especially i mean you're you're still young but your growth hormone levels are still much lower than they were when you were younger mm -hmm. your recovery is less than when you were younger right and now with mk677 your recovery is equal to that of your absolute prime like when you were 16 years old mm -hmm. and you can have that level of recovery at any age by increasing growth hormone absolutely yeah and some people they're worried about the negative effects well the next supplement will help mitigate those negative effects, Slin Pills. So I included this in the Natty Plus stack instead of just the, the Natty stack because Slin Pills, I believe, are essentially mandatory if you're taking MK677. I wouldn't say mandatory, but man. For me, they're mandatory because I did actually used to notice some negative effects when I was taking fairly high dosages of MK677. Slin Pills dramatically ameliorate those negative effects, right? So slim pills are extremely natural. They're 1.5 on the Natty or Not Spectrum rating, but these are just, so you could take them for overall health and insulin sensitivity, even if you're not taking MK677, but when you're taking MK677, they just mitigate a lot of the negative effects. So they're really important when you're taking MK677. So the priority is high. If you're taking MK677, I'd say the priority is, is medium if you're not taking MK677. But so I always take these during my MK677 cycles. So essentially they're an in, in insulin mimetic. They help increase insulin sensitivity. That's one of the 
uh, it's one of the side effects that most people worry about when they're taking MK677 is increased insulin resistance. So the more insulin resistance you are, the closer you are to type two diabetes, right? And slim pills help mitigate this, right? Yeah, the combination of MK677 plus slim pills is magical. But even if you took slim pills without the MK677, increasing insulin sensitivity in the muscle means that every carb that you eat mm -hmm. is more likely to store in the muscle than fat and all bodybuilding and health really is is just nutrient partitioning right we just want to cause what we eat to go into our muscles instead of into our fat and it's much healthier for what we eat to go into our muscles instead of into our fat and we have an epidemic of high blood sugar and that's because we're having unnatural diets of eating too many carbohydrates so we can restore our insulin sensitivity with the slim pills and uh it's happening while we take the slim pills and then even after we stop the slim pills we still retain the benefit of that insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. so if there's a short-term benefit to them and a long-term benefit to them in that the more calories that we eat that go into the muscle the less are going into our fat yeah absolutely and the cool thing about slim pills is it actually makes mk677 work more effectively it doesn't just decrease the negative effects it actually enhances the positive effects why because so growth hormone actually stimulates gluconeogenesis so basically that's the breakdown of protein in, in, into carbohydrates or, or glucose right so if you have lower blood sugar then that's actually going to signal to your body to release more growth hormone. So the slim pills actually keep your blood sugar low and that's gonna signal to your body that you don't have enough uh, glucose and then the, it's gonna release more growth hormone in order to promote, promote gluconeogenesis. Yeah. But, but the growth hormone is also anti-catabolic. So it's protecting you against muscle loss at times when you're skipping meals. So you specifically, since you uh, are not on the bodybuilding diet, uh, you have to worry as a natty with as much muscle as you have about losing muscle. Uh, your body will break down muscle to get carbohydrates, especially if you're carbohydrate addicted. But the growth hormone will block, not completely, but to a very significant amount, be anti-catabolic and block the breakdown of the muscle, mm -hmm. which is just as good at building muscle. It's like a penny saved is a penny earned. Yeah. If you don't break down muscle, you have that much more muscle. So it protects the muscle. And then so where does your body get fuel? Where does your body have to get fuel? If it can't pull from muscle and now your blood sugar is low, you start pulling from fat. So growth hormone will actually release fat and you'll be using fat for fuel instead of burning your muscles for fuel. And as a natty, every ounce of muscle is so precious. This is very significant. And this day in and day out, you being on these supplements and preventing muscle loss and increasing protein synthesis and increasing fat release and burning fat and adapting your body to burning fat and increasing your insulin sensitivity, these supplements are having a very acute effect when you take them and also a long-term effect that's also very healthy. Like you are healthier now and the lab work shows it than you were before you started this cycle. Right, so this is pretty wild because my HB1AC or my average blood sugar actually decreased after a 20 milligram MK677 cycle for about a month. And you would expect the complete opposite because MK677 is supposed to, to reduce insulin sensitivity and your blood sugar is probably gonna be higher. Because I incorporated slim pills, even with MK677, my average blood sugar was lower, which just blew my mind. So my, my, insulin, my insulin sensitivity was even better than I'd been before I started, which was wild. And you'd expect that because you increased calories that yeah. your blood sugar would go up. Your blood sugar went down despite increasing calories, despite increasing carbohydrates. How is that? That's, it's magical. How is that even possible? You absolutely hacked the system to be able to eat more calories and build build as much muscle and burn as much fat as you did with health benefits, not health side effects. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. So next we have AC262. So AC262 is essentially the most unnatural thing that I've taken. I give it a five on the natural and not spectrum rating because it is a SARM. It's a selective mm -hmm. androgen receptor modulator. So almost everyone is going to cons consider this unnatural, but at sensible dosages and durations of AC262, I have not experienced any testosterone suppression. In fact, even at 
fairly high doses, I haven't experienced any testosterone suppression. This is why I like AC262 because it seems to be superior to the other SARMs because it has a higher affinity for the androgen receptor. And so essentially the ratio of anabolic benefits to side effects is, is the best. So this one took a lot of convincing to get Connor to make the leap because mm -hmm. Connor was really afraid I don't know, AC262 might not be Natty Plus. I think it's going to suppress my natural testosterone levels. And he was very hesitant to take it. And I said, Connor, trust me, if you're taking blue and black ox along with the AC262, you will prevent the testosterone suppression. We're going to do the lab work. You're going to be able to tell. And if you see natural testosterone suppression on the AC262, you can stop. Mm -hmm. It's got a very short half-life. You can stop. You'll regain your natural testosterone production very quickly because blue and black ox testosterone boosters are that powerful mm -hmm. at restoring natural testosterone after a SARM cycle. So even if you did suppress it, it would have been so temporary, you know, then you never have to take another SARM. But instead, we worked your up to 30 milligrams, 30 milligrams which is a very high a dosage yeah. with the blue ox and black ox testosterone booster. And... We didn't, there was not enough evidence of suppression. In fact, the blood, the blood work, part of it showed the opposite, which was pretty wild. So we're actually, I'll be diving deep into the blood work in a later video, but it's extremely intriguing. I'm very excited about this. So I will be running this, this cycle again. But you did have a side effect of AC262. It, and this is to be expected. This is something I warn people about. And for some people, it's a benefit, not a side effect. But what did you experience? It made me just slightly more irritable. I noticed little things just got to me a little more. Now, I'm generally a very peaceful person. I like to train myself to be, com uh, um, I like to train myself to remain comfortable in uncomfortable situations, right? And so, even though it, it made me a little more irritable, I'm, I was still probably a lot more peaceful than the average person. And maybe it even, it gave me a little more edge, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it might have increased my productivity a little bit because it just gave me that little edge that maybe I was missing. So I don't know if it was a negative or a positive, but yes, it did increase my irritability just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so yeah, 10 to 20 milligrams, I would say a standard dosage. I took 30 and still didn't see, see testosterone suppression, which is wild. Priority is pretty high because this one, this one is the most powerful one in, in the Natty Plus stack, I would say. And be careful because other, there might be other SARMs that are maybe a little bit more powerful, but they seem to actually suppress testosterone possibly. AC262 so, is pretty powerful mm -hmm. and you did build significant muscle and your muscles definitely got harder and mm -hmm. more defined on it. Um, but yes, there are other SARMs that definitely will suppress natural right. testosterone at higher dosages. And that 30 milligrams is a pretty decent sized dosage. I mean, I right. put clients on something like TRT plus 30 milligrams, and it's very significant and very powerful. And we, right, we start usually, most people start at 10 milligrams. Mm -hmm. and Which I did too. work yeah. their way up, yeah. But this is, the, this is the nuance of the Natty Plus protocol, right? It's not that every SARM is Natty Plus. Only mm -hmm. some of the SARMs. Our natty plus s23 right? is a sarm that would definitely not mm -hmm. be natty plus because it is highly suppressive and it will su suppress natural testosterone levels right so this is the detail that we've dived into to really formulate this this optimal supplement stack right so there is a lot of nuance to this and this is why it's so cool okay next black ox testosterone booster so this is one of the two testosterone boosters that the combination of which doubled my testosterone in just 11 days which is pretty wild so yeah standard dosage eight pills I take I took 16 when I was when when it doubled so I was taking double the dosage but that just goes to show the, the potential of black ox testosterone booster if you take enough you're going to significantly increase your testosterone and you only took it 10 to 11 yeah, days right. to double your testosterone so you could have taken a lower dosage over a longer period of time as well but but we wanted to see first if we could increase his natural testosterone and then we can drop back on the dosage later right. uh, because uh, we were trying to do a transformation very quickly like we wanted to see what we could do with the natural supplements very quickly um, without you know changing diet or training or anything like that just like what if we bring his testosterone up put him on the natural supplements what is happens to his physique and of course everything that you'd expect the all this you didn't you weren't really having psychological symptoms of low testosterone uh were maybe you? maybe oh. i was a little low energy a, oh, a little okay. low motivation Good. 
And so, yeah, a little bit, not a lot, but it certainly did impact me psychologically as well, which was very, very beneficial. Yeah, but definitely impacted the physique because mm -hmm. at the beginning, before we added in the AC262, we still saw a lot of great progress just from increasing your testosterone levels. Right, yeah. And Black Ox is considered a Natty Plus supplement. It's not considered a Natty supplement. I give it a three on the Natty or Not spectrum, mostly because of DHEA. So DHEA is a hormone precursor. It's a precursor to testosterone and other hormones in the body. And it's actually banned by WADA, mm. right? So Black Ox Testosterone Booster, if you're competing in a, a WADA sanctioned event, then you actually should not be taking it. But that just goes to show that it is quite powerful. Banned by WADA usually means banned. it works. Exactly. So, <laughs> you can yeah. actually use the WADA list, you know, what supplements are banned in sports and be, mm -hmm. and be like, this is the list of stuff that actually works. If it's not on the list, then you have to question, does it work or not? But of course, like, you know, things like creatine and right. hepatic and intercesterone, I don't think are on there no, no they're still not, work yeah. but if yeah. it is on the list then it's very highly likely it works right and it affects your hormones in in multiple different pathways so it has dhea it also has dim which helps control estrogen it helps limit estrogen by converting more potent forms of estrogen to least potent forms of less potent forms of estrogen it really just helps control your estrogen and, and, and optimize it right so black ox really has a lot of good substances that are working through multiple mechanisms to optimize your hormones. So it's, it's a great testosterone booster. Okay. And next, I think that this is the final one on the Natty Plus stack, 3AD. And this is probably the most interesting one. This is a fairly new substance. It's actually patented and sold exclusively by Enhanced Labs. And this is why no one has really heard about it. So basically, it's the world's strongest and most effective DSHEA compliant metabolite. So this one actually isn't banned by WADA. Very similar substances are. It probably will be banned by WADA eventually. It's not banned by WADA. Well, so, okay. So not well, they don't know about it yet. Well, not specifically. Don't tell them about I know. it. Well, this, so yeah, this is the... Pro <laughs> This is the issue. It's like if they found, if they could test for it and found it in your system, they'd probably say it was similar to other things and they could probably get you for it. You know oh. what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a really iffy one, but specifically, no, I don't think 3AD specifically is banned by WADA. So this is very, very interesting. I right? wonder if it, it belongs to a class of things that could be banned. It it's just something, sounds yeah, too good to be true that something so powerful and effective is not uh, banned. That's where they could get you. Yeah. That's why it's, it's iffy. It's a gray area because yeah. it could be considered part of a class of something yeah. that's banned. But I'd be careful with it. Right. Yeah. So if you, yeah. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but if you look on the, on the WADA website, it's not going to list 3AD wow. Wow. last time okay. I checked. Right. So essentially this is some sort of modification of DHEA where you guys have made it so it more easily converts to testosterone in the body. So, and it's very interesting because the claims are, you know, no, no hair loss, no suppression, really no side effects whatsoever, but it's going to significantly boost testosterone. It's going to actually convert to testosterone in the body, yet still somehow not suppress natural testosterone. And that's why it's so confusing. I actually didn't believe it, but when I did the blood work, <laughs> when I did the blood work, it was wild. It, it boosted my testosterone significantly. A actually, the highest my testosterone has been throughout all these tests was after a megadose of, of 3AD. It was 740 or something like that. In the previous test, it was a little lower. It was around like 600 or something like that. So it significantly boosted my testosterone. And there was actually no evidence of suppression whatsoever. So higher testosterone, but then LH and FSH were the same. And so there really wasn't any evidence of testosterone suppression and it gave me a huge increase in testosterone and I will be diving into the lab work in a later video, but this is why this is like the most intriguing supplement. So yeah, this is actually sold by Enhanced Labs. Most of the Natty Plus supplements like MK677 and AC262, those are sold by Swiss Chems or Next Chems, but this one is sold by Enhanced. It's just, it's kind of grouped into just the other, other natural supplements online. And yeah, it's wild. So it's a really intriguing supplement. And I'm really excited to experiment more with it. So yeah, I, I think that's essentially it. I also take, I mean, I take other supplements as well. These are kind of the main ones that are really the most powerful in, in the Natty Plus stack. But I also take things like, like Carb Tech, Carb Tech from Enhanced Labs. It contains creatine, which is cool. It also has natural flavoring. So I use it to flavor my protein yogurt. It's really good to take intra workout and, and, and post workout. I take heart, liver, and kidney support. Even though we're not really worried about my, we've done tests and we don't see significant damage to my heart, liver, or kidneys through the, the blood work. 
So I, I like to take it just in case, just to be extra safe and for the salt palmetto that helps mitigate my, mm. my, my hair loss, right? Of course, just omega-3s for overall holistic well-being, the Enhanced Lab multivitamin, the probiotic, the three-in-one probiotic, right, to, to optimize gut health. Um, the essential amino acids, which is cool, I take those sometimes for the nootropic effect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes pre-workout, I don't, I don't take Rage pre-workout all the time, but if I really need an extra boost, I will take Rage pre-workout as well. So yeah, it's, it's really good to, there's a synergistic effect between just the purely natural supplements and the 90 plus supplements. So as well. I wonder so. what's next for you, Connor. I mean, now you've done all these experiments about bringing your natural testosterone up, how much muscle you can build. And now you've got this physique, which is amazing. Nobody believes you're natural. Uh, but there's still a lot of different compounds that are out there that mm -hmm. could be considered natty plus. Well, so do you have any clue at all or no? Well, I mean, okay. you don't have to, but is this something, is something calling to you as like the one next thing that is extremely intriguing. And this is really testing the boundary of, of the natty plus philosophy. And this substance, I, I, I it's conflicting in my mind, but it, it's MGF. So can you explain MGF, the localized MGF, and the one that doesn't go systemic. Mm -hmm. And can you explain that to me and to the audience mm -hmm. and explain why that fits all the rules of Natty Plus, actually? Yeah, so I've been presenting Connor with, just like we did with this, I'm you know, presenting Connor with AC262 and giving him that option to incorporate in the Natty Plus and do the lab work experiment and prove well, whether it's liver toxic, kidney toxic, whether he has side effects. Uh, how it affects his natural testosterone, his lipid profile, everything. And uh, given a lot of options, the one that, that has piqued his interest the most is mechano growth factor, MGF. This is naturally occurring in the muscle. When you work out hard, it's released in the muscle and it's responsible for uh, creating new muscle cells. And this happens on a very very small scale naturally but if we were to inject a larger amount directly into the muscle then the theory is you would grow a lot more new muscle cells like significantly more you're just adding more of what's natural right in the site where you inject it so for example if you inject it into the biceps you would grow bicep muscle but it wouldn't affect the other areas of the body there's two different kinds of MGF. MGF PEG, pegylated MGF. Now that circulates through the whole body and that lasts a whole day. That's what we use during the mass blast because it would just be too much work to inject every single muscle. Uh, but Coach Trevor really loved injecting MGF into his individual muscles like his biceps, for example. And it, it when it hits the bloodstream it gets deactivated it doesn't circulate in the rest of the body it doesn't go to other muscles in the body it just kind of stays in the area it only lasts five minutes and and that's about how long it takes to get into the muscle cell stay in the muscle cell and do its job and that's it it doesn't need to be working all the time it can it can get in flip its genetic switches cause new muscle cells to be built and then be out of the bicep Oh, did it, is that, does that mean the camera shut off or are we good? It's still going. Yeah. Camera's still going? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so, the, so the reason why MGF would be natty plus is because it's not going to impact your natural hormone levels. It's definitely very effective at growing the muscle that it's injected in. It doesn't have any health consequences because it doesn't leave the muscle that you're injecting it in. So it doesn't like go to your heart, doesn't do anything. In Even if it did, it's not something that impacts the, the other tissues in the body. This is something very specific to signaling muscle growth in the muscle. And much more specific than steroids. For example, testosterone affects lots of parts of the body. It affects so many. I mean, it affects your skin, your 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 organs, everything. Um, but MGF just uh, causes more muscle cell growth in the muscle. So it, it qualifies, and it's significantly effective. So it qualifies as Natty Plus, which is probably shocking to a lot of people because it's something so powerful and it's something that also has to be injected. You know, how could that fit into Natty Plus? But if you look at the Natty Plus rules, technically it fits. And that's the thing. It just, when you first hear about it, it just doesn't seem natural whatsoever. But again, that's part of the Natty Plus protocol is, is kind of limited or questioning our preconceived beliefs and thinking critically. 
And so when you really dive into what this is, I mean, if it's not suppressing my natural hormonal production, if it's not going to cause me any adverse health effects, because it doesn't go systemic, it stays localized in the muscle, right? Then there doesn't seem to be any reason not to take it unless you're attached to this natural label. So I think that I would be down to do an experiment with it. I'm going to research it more, but yeah, that's why it's so intriguing to me because I mean, this is going to shatter just this, this common bodybuilding paradigm that we have of, of natural or, or not. So it totally seems like a cheat code. And a lot of people, they get triggered when they're like, Oh, he's it looks, seems like he's cheating. You know what I mean? But if it has no negative effects and it only builds muscle, I don't know. Why wouldn't I take it? Yeah. And I'm very excited because there hasn't been an influencer, natty influencer like you that I think has ever publicly done it. A lot of bodybuilders do it. Uh, a lot of big bodybuilders will take this amongst a lot of, a lot of other peptides. Um, but nobody quite like you publicly has ever taken it before. And that would be really significant. I think finally it would open up people's minds to how powerful some of these compounds are that are actually safe. And again, they would ask the question, if it's so effective and it's so healthy or has no health side effects, why isn't everybody taking it? And that's the question. But that's the same thing with anything. If somebody has to be first, eh, humans are just afraid of the unknown, afraid to try something new. And there has to be a first person that makes something feel like more normal and more acceptable and less taboo. And then once that happens, everybody jumps on board and then it becomes some popular thing. And then everybody forgets that it was ever even a taboo. It just becomes normal and accepted. Right. Creatine was a good example of that. When I was 14 years old, I started taking creatine. That's wow. 26 years ago. Wow. And when I started taking creatine, a uh, doctor told me it's going to kill me. He said, it's going to destroy my kidneys and my heart and my liver. And uh, family members told me I was taking steroids. They told me to stop. Uh, I mean, it, I, I got so much hate for taking creatine at 14. You're too young. It's going to stunt your growth. Oh, my God. Everybody, even all the doctors told me it would stunt my growth at age 14. Wow. But I did the basic research and I understood biochemistry at 14. I was reading medical books at 14. This was my hobby. And so I'm like, they're, what are they talking about? This is ridiculous. Do they not understand the pathway by which it works through and what it does? And the fact that we're eating this in meat anyways, are you telling me I shouldn't eat too much? It just didn't make any sense right. to me. That's the same thing that goes with MGF and a lot of these other things out there. So I hope that since you connor um challenge your own beliefs and that's really what you've become known for the last few years and all the weird and crazy stuff you've done people uh hopefully by now realize that all of it has been an experiment to challenge yourself and your own beliefs so that you could grow as a person drop the taboos and find out what's optimal for your quality of life and that's exactly what natty plus is mm. it's a cracking the code of applying chemistry in a way that is what a lot of people think is taboo, but there's no reason it should be only because uh, of the culture against taking supplements and trying to lump supplements and steroids all together into one. And I hope you break it for people. And yeah, good luck. well, that's a pretty convincing speech. So I will probably have to try it. So we have a couple of different options. We can inject it into the biceps which is probably what I'm going to do. I think that'll be the most fun because we could inject it to the cat into the calves as well. That's probably where I need it the most, but that's, that's what people have the hardest time yeah. growing their calves. That's just not going to be motivating to me. You know, you I know, really don't, don't care about, about the calves, calves that much. Okay. Or, you know, it was funny. Me and Elon were considering what if we injected into my jaw muscles? I mean, my, my, made my jaw just look oh, like a giga chat. That sounds uncomfortable, but that would be. <laughs> that sounds, yeah, it sounds extremely uncomfortable, but that would be pretty wild. Yeah. Imagine me just walking around with this giant jaw from engine. And at least, I mean, maybe that would show that it actually worked. Oh, would be our friend evident. got jaw implants the other oh, day. Really? Yeah. And uh, it definitely, he definitely has like a thicker jaw, like a cartoon character, but wow. it's definitely there. I think the biceps, the biceps are better. Biceps are probably yeah. the best, yeah. yeah. And so they will take measurements. And, and so you have everything. two heads to the biceps. So you do each head with yeah. a tiny little insulin needle. Like you won't even feel it. Int and intramuscular it though. It has to be intramuscular. It has to go into the yeah. muscle, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I hope you guys are excited for that experiment that's probably coming soon. I hope you guys enjoy this video and understand more about the Natty Plus philosophy. Congratulations on actually watching this video. You were, you're one of the first to you really didn't flex your biceps yeah. even once. Got to get a bicep flex okay. there. They'll be bigger soon. But yeah, you guys are some of the first to be exposed 
to this philosophy and this cutting edge new technique, new Natty Plus protocol. And so, cause this is going on the Natty Plus protocol channel and it's, it's not big yet, but it probably will be soon. So you guys are some of the first to know. So congratulations, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, we'll see you in the next videos where I will be diving deep into my lab work on the various experiments that I've done with these Natty Plus supplements. So peace.